Hi everyone, today we are going to complete our movement events and fix some bugs. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And if you have anything in mind, just comment down below. Also, if you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee. Link in the description. Let's start. Before we start, I just want to mention that this video is a bit complicated and fast. So prepare yourself and you can stop the video whenever you want. And just a recommendation. If you couldn't understand while creating the blueprint, don't waste your time because you will understand everything when I explain after creating it. We have two problems with our project right now. The first one is, if we walk backwards or sideways while we are crouched, our speed increases back to normal even when we are crouched. And the second one is, we can jump when we are crouched. We don't want that because we can't jump while we are crouched, right? Okay, so let's go to the first person folder, create a new folder called enums, and open it up. Then right click, blueprint, and click enumeration. Name it E underscore movement mode. We are going to add four enumerators and name them walking, crouching, sprinting, and edit mode. Then we are back in first person BP. Set the sprint toggles category to sprint. Create a new variable called movement and set its type to the enumeration we've created. Then add an override function and select can jump. Right click on the function and select add call to the parent function. Then add a and boolean node. Get is uncrouch timer active by handle and connect to not boolean then connect the pins as shown. Lastly, get the movement variable, get an equal node, set the B of the equal node to crouching, then get a not boolean node and connect the pins as shown. In this function, we override Unreal Engine's can jumps function. We first get the Unreal Engine's built-in jump function with the parent node. Then we get if the uncrouch timer is not active, because if it is active, it means we are still crouched, but we can't stand up yet. And we also check if we are not crouched by getting the movement variable and checking if it's not equal to crouching. Because we have overridden the engine's built-in function, we don't have to call this function. Now we are going to fix our movement events. First, we go to the sprint event, get the movement variable, and add a switch on node. From the walking output, set movement to sprinting, then copy and paste the switch node as shown, then connect the pins. Create a new custom event called Start Sprint and connect it to the upper switch. Then go back to the lower switch. From the sprinting output, set movement to walking and connect the pins. In the sprint event, we first check our movement mode. And if we are walking, we increase our walk speed. And before we decrease our max walk speed, we check if we are sprinting. This was the cause of the problem that increases the speed when we are crouched. Because the should stop sprint event is called every time we press W, A, S and D. And if we don't check for sprinting, it will increase our speed back to normal if we walk backwards when we are crouched. We will use start sprint later in this video. Now it's time to fix the crouch event. We are first going to get our movement. Add an equal node and check if we are sprinting or not. From the true output, call the stop sprint event and connect the pins as shown. Get the uncrouch timer variable and place it as shown. After we check falling, set movement to crouching. After we set the crouch alpha, we get movement and switch node. 
and connect the pins as shown. Go to the stand up event, set our movement to walking, then add a sequence node. Connect the first pin to reverse, add a branch and check if the sprint toggle is true. And if it's true, call the start sprint event. In the crouch event, we first check if we are sprinting when we press the crouch key. If we are not sprinting, we just connect it to the next branch. But if we are sprinting, we first stop it, then connect it to the next branch. And if we are not falling too, before we make changes to our character, we first set our movement mode to crouching. And for the stand-up event, we first set our movement to walking. Then we reverse the crouch effects and check if we are still pressing the sprint key. We just start sprinting. And in this part of the crouch event, we just added a switch on the movement variable. Because if we are pressing the sprint key when we stand up, as you know, we start sprinting, and because timeline is an event that fires 0.2 seconds long, it will try to set our speed to base walk speed even when we've started sprinting after the crouch event. So that's why if we are sprinting, we just skip the setting speed part. And now the problems are both fixed. And you can also try sprint and crouch events. When you hold shift and uncrouch, you will immediately start sprinting. We will start creating our walk event, so we are back in first person BP. Create a timeline called TL underscore walking. Then enable loop, autoplay, and last keyframe options. And set the length to one second. Add three float tracks and one event track. Rename them left right underscore alpha, up down underscore alpha, Roll underscore alpha and footstep. Now create keys for left right underscore alpha as shown. Select all the keys, right click and select auto, then adjust the line as shown. Now create keys for up down underscore alpha as shown. Select all the keys, right click and select auto, create keys for roll underscore alpha as shown. Select all the keys, right click and select auto, then adjust the line as shown. Lastly, create keys for footstep as shown. Then we will add two lerps and connect their alphas as shown. For the first one, set values to minus 0.3 and 0.3. And for the second one, set values to minus 0.7 and 0.4. Create a new vector variable called walkvec and get a set node for it. Then split it and connect the pins as shown. Then create a new rotation variable called walkrot. And again, add a set node for it and split it. Add a lerp node, connect the pins as shown and then set the values to 1.5 and minus 1.5. Create a float variable called walk anim alpha and add a set node. Then get our character movement, then get the movement node from it and get an equal node. Set the B value to falling, then add a select float node. Get our actor's velocity, add a vector length node and connect them. Then add a normalize to range node and for the range max, get the base walk speed, then connect the pins as shown. 
Get the walking timeline and set the play rate of it from a lerp. Set the B value of it to 1.2. And for the alpha, get walk anim alpha. From the footstep output, add a play sound at the location node. Get the get actor location node and plug it in. Then click the down arrow, add two lerps and connect them as shown. Change the values to 0 0.2, 1, 0 0.8, and 1. Then get the alpha from normalize to range node. Then set the sound to walking footstep underscore Q. Then add a branch and check if movement equals sprinting. From the true output, call dip and set values to 4 and 0 0.35. Then set the walk variables category to walking. In the walk event, we use the timeline to call the event. As you can remember, we enabled loop and autoplay options in the timeline. So the timeline will run as an event tick. Then we get the left right alpha, up down alpha and roll alpha and connect them to lerps. From the lerps, we get the vector and the rotator that will move our character to make our procedural walking animations. Then we get our velocity, then calculate the length of it so we get a positive value, then normalize it to range, and we set max range to base walk speed so we get a value that is proportional to our base walk speed. Then we check if our character is falling, and if it is falling, we choose zero because we don't want to play the procedural walking animations if we are falling. Then connect the pin to set the walk anim alpha node. This is the variable that will control our procedural walking animation. Then we set the play rate of the timeline from this walk anim alpha. So if we walk faster than the base walk speed, the timeline will play faster and so will our animation. From the footstep output, we play footstep sound and we also calculate the volume multiplier and pitch multiplier based on the value that is proportional to base walk speed. Lastly, we check if we are sprinting, and if we do to shake our character more, we call the dip event every time we take a step. We are going to create a function called calculate lag vec, then add get velocity, get actor forward vector, get actor right vector, and get actor up vector nodes. Then add three dot product nodes and connect pins as shown. We get our base walk speed and multiply it with minus one. Then we add two divide nodes and connect the pins as shown. Get the jump Z velocity from our character movement, then multiply it by minus one. Add a divide node and connect the pins. Add a make vector node, then connect the pins as shown. Multiply the vector by two. Add a clamp vector size node and set the max value to 4. And promote the output to a variable called location lag vec. Then add a vinterp2 node. Get the same variable for current. Then get world delta seconds for delta time. Get delta seconds again, but now first add a divide node and connect the delta seconds to B. Set A to 1, then divide the result by 6 and connect the pin as shown. Then go back to the event graph and call the function we've created at the end of the walking event. In this function we create a lag for our procedural walking animation that will smooth the transitions. You can see the difference by watching this video.
First, we get the required vectors from our actor. Then, by using the dot product and the negative version of the base walk speed, we can easily calculate the opposite direction of our moving character. For example, this node will give this result. And for the up vector, we get jump z velocity and multiply it by minus 1 for the same reasons. Then we make a vector because we will add these values to our character's bones. Then we multiply it by 2 because the vector is too small. Then we clamp it just in case because we don't want to get a huge number in any way. Then we use Vinterp to node to change the variable smoothly. Select all the nodes, right click and then select collapse nodes. Rename it to walk event. Change the location like vex category to walking. Congratulations to everyone! We've finished our base movement system. Trust me, this was the hardest part of the series. Thank you for watching. If you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee by clicking on the link in the description. And if you have anything in mind, just comment down below.